Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Tonight's vehicle is going to be this 2007 BMW X3. And it's been towed here because it would not start. Uh, you put the key in, all the lights on the dash do turn on. Once you go into the crank position, we get no starter operation. Now this has had the starter replaced with a BMW factory uh, replacement unit. So it's most likely not going to be the starter. So what we are going to do is scan the vehicle, look for codes. I'm kind of thinking we're going to have some sort of key or EWS issue. That's the uh, immobilizer system for BMWs. But let's go ahead, scan it, see what we find, and go from there. Okay, so as to why I believe might be a uh, immobilizer key issue is <clears throat> one of my confessions is this is actually one of my daughter's cars and I, it just over a year ago or, or whatnot I can't remember exactly uh, in the beginning when I had gotten that tool uh, I went ahead and was messing around with trying to do keys now both of these here are aftermarket keys uh, they have worked for this whole time uh, I think Maybe a couple or a few times there have been issues uh, where one didn't work but the other did, so on and so forth. So, uh, but at this point, we're fully crapped out. None of the keys work, and I'll show you. So, for starters, we'll put this key in. Key out. Now I'll go in the crank, and nothing. We'll pull that one out, and then I'll show you with this one. Now you do, on these EWS cars, you have to wait about 10 seconds. Uh, if not, the uh, EWS picks it up as the previous key. So that's just one thing, a piece of information to keep in the back of your head. So that one is now in. Key on. Let's go to crank. Nothing. So we get uh, key on, no crank with both of them. Let's, uh, let's start scanning it. I'm going to use this one for now and see what codes are stored. Okay, so I've scanned the uh, vehicle. Let's take a look at the report. Obviously, we're interested in uh, some particular modules. Um, we've got an interface code in the DME for the EWS. Let's see. I think the battery did um, get weak at some point. But, uh, okay, so this is what it had come in with um, yesterday. And... The, the code that we are getting is that the key number 8 is not identified, incorrect random code, key 8 not identified. So that is from the EWS, and it is reporting that one of these keys, either this one or the other one, is not being seen. So, um, now we, we inserted two keys. But we're only reporting one key, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So, again, that's the uh, main reason why I'm pretty sure it's going to be a mobilizer EWS issue, key issue, whatnot. And let's go to live data. So, here, let's see. Key identification supposedly is okay. Key random code is not okay. Key password supposedly okay. Key transmits current key, so key 8. So, let's see. That key that I made, uh, I end up picking, I guess, slot number 8 is not working. So, this uh, data pin is where you want to look at for basically if you are having the starter blocked off and having to do with immobilizer issue it says blocked 
Now, it can be a little confusing because it says key identification, but then random code, not okay. That one says okay. That says okay, telling us a key, so on and so forth. So what looks like is happening, it, it's able to tell which key is inserted, but each key also keeps and holds and cycles through um, immobilizer information within it, in, inside its little chip. And it has like a rolling cone. It has to match the uh, EWSs, so on and so forth. And looks like that part of information is what is corrupted or been lost or not working right. That's why this key cannot start the car. So if we, let's see, we back out, we remove this key, we wait our time, we will insert the other uh, key that I had made and see if we can pull or see what data we pull with this key inserted. Okay, key on, there you go, let's see if we get any different codes at the moment. So same trouble codes, all related to key 8. If we go to live data, let's see, so here we go, look, key identification, not okay. We're clearly going to have a code that's not going to be okay. So those two now on this key is not okay. And password is not okay. And if you look there, it's an unknown key number. Uh, let's see. And of course, this will be blocked. So that would kind of make sense as to us having a trouble code. For just one of the keys and having it lost its information. This key that we've got inserted looks like it just completely internally has crapped out. Uh, it can't even transmit what number key it's, it's, uh, it is and obviously it's lost its immobilizer information. So that gives us Pretty good idea as to what's going on. And with that, let's take a look and see if we can sort of talk to these keys. And also with that, we are going to remove the uh, EWS, which I've unbolted. It's hanging right there. This guy right here. We're going to remove that and bring it with us just to uh, see if we can pull any info off of it. There we go. And see if we can make something happen. Okay, and um, another quick piece of confession. This, if you remember, I was uh, messing around when first got the tool. And at that point, I'd never uh, had to solder anything on circuit boards. was basically using hers as a guinea pig. Now, this here, this set here, this is actually a f the factory key, if you can tell the writing back there. Uh, and this is the original EWS. This guy here with this yellow dot, this is the one I just removed from the car. Now as to why I have this original one, um, well, it's because I goofed up again. I've never had to solder on circuit board um, and go figure, go mess around with trying to make keys on circuit board and if I were to goof up like I did, I render the car useless and not being able to start. But what I did before I messed this one up and let the magic smoke out was I was able to 
hook up correctly, uh, pull the information and saved it. I saved the EEPROM info. And because I did that, I was able to uh, rectify the issue. So I ended up going to the junkyard, getting another EWS uh, 4.4. It had to be the same. As you can see there, 4.4. And I ended up making the connections on this guy and writing that EEPROM info on this guy. And then I generated those two, um, these two keys with it. And it started, ran, and drove, and everything. So I saved my butt that time. Um, off camera last night, I hooked this up, used this key, it was tied to this one. Um, Went ahead, turned the lock, scanned it. This guy does not communicate. So it is truly um, not operational. And what I did, I think it was either I just wasn't paying attention or something, made a wrong connection, and then, you know, powered up to try to read. And so once you you make the wrong connections, you can burn up a unit. And I think that's what I ended up doing. Um, sometimes it's possible to still get EEPROM info even if the unit is dead. Um, I might end up messing with that here. Uh, you know, I saved it and kept it because I knew things didn't go 100% and I was learning. So, uh, I don't know if I'll have to resort to trying to read this info because not sure if this info has been compromised, but... It's a, it's, a, it's a game right now of trying to get this car running because uh, we need her up and going. It is a day or two before Christmas and we need to uh, make sure everyone is mobile for family events. So um, let's just uh, try to read this key. So we'll put it in the slot. I'm going to just hang it so that the key can um, be down there. Let's see. Of course. So let's go here to Programmer. And at this point, I'm just curious about the keys themselves. Um, see what we can see out of them. If you remember, this one was kind of the dead key. Let's call it. And so the programmer will reach out to try to uh, wirelessly communicate with it. So, all right, we, we pull some info let's see it, it's because it has been programmed but the one thing <laughs> that i am seeing that doesn't look correct is this here it says volvo i don't know if that's supposed to be mitsubishi slash volvo or what but um so we'll cancel out of there we'll pull this guy out we'll put that guy in now and we'll do the same and okay so this one does pull info as well and uh, it's at least listed as BMW rolling key now this one says number seven but I don't know 100% if what this numbering pulls up is the exact uh, location of its position in the immobilizer so uh, not too tied up with that at the moment um, but we will continue on and just for some giggles I will show you so we'll pull the original one as well Just so that you can see that uh, it does list as BMW on there. 
All right, so there we go, BMW rolling, and again, this one's listing it as zero. And so let's back out. Let's see if we go here to remote control detection. So you're supposed to put it by the unit and hit one of the buttons. And if the key remote portion is working, there we go. It picks up the frequency. So that's the factory one. Looks like uh, every so often it'll work. Now, it wasn't working on the very first click. So I remember that one, the locks were not always working. So let's go ahead with this aftermarket key. The one that seems to be kind of really messed up as far as information. Let's go ahead. So still nothing, it's not being found. This one really seems to really have uh, pooped itself. So we'll put that one aside for right now. And I will go with this one. Let's see, we'll start again. Let's see how, let's see. Okay, almost right away picks that one up. So this one's looks like it's remote functions seem to be working. It sort of transmits its identification number, but uh, again, the immobilizer info in it has been compromised, looks like. So, looks like we have key issues, uh, as we stated. Uh, so, this one, completely dead. I don't think we can do anything with. This one, I'm not sure. But the other thing I noticed... Now if you can hear that, hopefully, there is something rattling around in there, and I don't think that's supposed to happen. In fact, I've got another one here, brand new, and let me take it out. And let's see if it rattles. So, no rattle trap, unlike So something's come apart in this guy um, compared to a new one. Uh, that could be part of the issue. So let's see what uh, what steps we're going to take next. Okay, <laughs> so look at the, that is the the pill or the chip for the, uh, for the key, that's where all the information is stored, that's what's been rattling, um, let's see. As far as where it's supposed to be placed, I am not a hundred percent sure. So these are the buttons. So it's, let's see, one, two, three, four. So yeah, one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, I'm not sure on where the, uh, this little guy is supposed to be laying, which I don't think it has to be, well, maybe I was wrong. I was going to say, I don't know if it has to be attached to the board or not, but there are some metal contacts there. And there, but 
Not sure if it definitely doesn't. It's not supposed to be rattling. I think I'm going to take this one apart and see where that guy's supposed to be. Okay, so yeah, correct. It, it does not have to be anywhere on the board. That was its uh, place. That's its holding spot. So, um, I think I'm going to try to make a new key with the uh, immobilizer EWS info as if we were just adding a key. So let me see how that works out. Okay, so I've got my connections made on the board. I've actually removed the chip off that new key that I took apart. And let's go ahead and read the EEPROM. Let's go EEPROM. Let's go read. Okay, so we've got a reading. Now, one thing I want to do uh, is let me set it to double read because just of all the issues that we're going, we've got going on. Let's see. So verify on. Let's see. Enable verify erase. No. So for the read, let's go ahead. So this is going to read it twice, compare both reads, and if both are the same, it'll give me the info. I just want to avoid any type of corrupt reading issues. Okay, so with that, I'll save this. Okay, so let me leave we back out all the way and go into the uh, immobilizer portion so we'll go emo except I'm actually gonna go ahead and put that chip in there already Let's see BMW okay system we want to go into um, immobilizer and EWS system key operation. Let's see, key learning. So this is information that's derived from the EEPROM information, which holds all your key allocations and so on and so forth. So from the original portion, looks like one, two, three have been used. Usually the first four should be. And there is eight and nine. So those are the ones that I made, eight and nine. Clearly, 9 is the one that's completely unresponsive. 8 is the one that's kind of sort of wigging out. So, we're going to pick, then let's pick 7 and right key. Okay. And there with it blinking, it is writing the key. Okay, so supposedly we've got a new key written in slot 7. There we go, 7 is now used. It's going to be this chip. And if everything is done properly, it should be able to start. All right, so I'll take this chip, put it in the key, bring this over to the car, see if we can get something to work. Okay, guys, so I've got the EWS connected, hung back up, 
here is the key all put back together. I transferred over the uh, the uh, blade portion. So let's see. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna key it up first. I'm not gonna try to crank. I'm gonna wait for the suspense. Which uh, I mean, that would tell us right away whether we've got a good situation or not. I want to go into the EWS, see if we can read the key. We are looking for key number seven to be inserted and identified, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight into the EWS. Let's read the codes. I don't know if it holds them in memory. If we have new ones, whatnot. Okay, that one was there. I might have to look into that, but uh, it does have two power supplies. It does have a redundancy. Key identification, okay. Key random code, okay. Key password, okay. And the magic one, let's see, boom. All right, key seven. Status, motor, electronics, blocked. Let's see. There we go. So I don't know why that's staying blocked. We clearly have started and are running. Let's get rid of those um, steering angle sensor lights. You just have to go lock the lock when your battery dies. So there we go. So we've got a new key successfully made. Okay, so yeah, that's not changing. Not sure why. Let's uh let's test it again. So I'm gonna wait the uh, ten seconds. And as far as the remote, you do have to program them in. So that that's not like the newer ones where it'll transfer over. But let's see. All right, sweet. So we'll be able to get the car back up running with no issues. All right, I'm gonna clear the rest of the uh, fault memories in the whole vehicle and maybe try to program the locks. All right guys, so that's the, uh, the struggles of getting this one running. Clearly, both keys that I had made, and they're, they're aftermarket keys. Uh, you know, I got them playing around. <laughs> she was the guinea pig at that time and date. Um, I have come a little bit further with soldering and so on and so forth and getting used to the tool but uh, at this point in time looks like just creating a whole new key out of another new blank one uh, has rectified the issue uh, the EWS and the car the rest of the car everything is working properly it was just the keys not being able to be identified or they were not communicating with the EWS so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I get out of the jam again. She gets to go to Christmas. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of this uh, EWS uh, information. And with that, have a good holiday. And we'll move on to the next one. Thank you for watching. <laughs>